Valerie, how do we pronounce your second name? Hanachuk. 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 Where is that from, Valerie, please? Uh, well, my father's family is Romanian, but the name okay. itself is a Canadian immigration, immigration official's idea of how to write a name. It's very complicated. Okay, we won't go into that. <laughs> Valerie, what do you do in your life at the moment, professionally? <laughs> professionally, I am a senior lecturer in literature and translation at the University of East Anglia, mm -hmm. which, of course, is in the UK. And I'm also director of the British Centre for Literary Translation, okay. um, which is also housed at the University of East Anglia. Okay. You're not... British, Valerie, it seems. How do you know? I yes. wonder. No, I am Canadian. Um, okay. I've been in the UK now for five years. Uh, I finished my PhD at University of Alberta mm -hmm. in Canada and then did a postdoc at Columbia University in New York. And when this job okay. came up in the UK, I just thought really So you're out. a complete person then? Exactly, yeah. exactly. Yeah. A PhD in complete and I was working on women's writing in English, French and Japanese. Okay. I do have an earlier master's degree in French literary translation and after my PhD, which had nothing to do with translation, I sort of reintroduced it at the postdoc stage okay. and became re-interested in what, what was the PhD? Uh, I was looking at liminal metaphor in women's writing in English, French, right. and Japanese, and it was going from um, Murasaki Shikibu in Japan through Marie de France, Elizabeth Inchball, Edith Wharton, and yeah. talking about what I called spatiosexual metaphor. Okay, so uh, nothing to do with organizing the Center for British no. uh, Translation. Tell us a bit about the Center. How, how does that work? Sure, well, the Center was founded in 1989, so we're coming up pretty close to our 25th anniversary. Mm -hmm. and it was founded by W.G. Zebalt, mm -hmm. the, the German writer, uh, who was a professor of European history at the university. And I joined, as I said, or I think I mentioned in 2007, um, primarily to sort of reintroduce an academic stream to the center. The center has mm -hmm. had a very strong program of outreach activities, what we call enterprise and engagement, where we engage with training and networking programs for practicing translators. Mm -hmm. But that meant we sat, sat rather uneasily within the university because mm -hmm. we weren't really doing anything academic, per se. Mm -hmm. So as somebody with a PhD and an interest in the academic side of translation, I was asked to sort of bring that into play. I'm the first director in a little while who's actually an academic. Previous okay. ones have been more in the uh, arts administration angle. Is the idea to promote more translations into English? Our or? mission is to bring more international literature into the hands of UK readers, mm -hmm. more and better. Mm -hmm. So we reach out trying to address languages that are at a cultural deficit yeah. with English. But do you have money to pay for translations? Uh, we don't pay for translations. We tra train the translators. Ah, That's our okay. focus. We our money is, well, originally we were half funded by the university and half by Arts Council England, mm -hmm. and now it's those two together are about two thirds of our budget, and we get another third of our budget now uh, from various cultural organizations mm -hmm. and embassies around the world. So you're surviving the moment of austerity. Actually, uh, people laugh at me and say that Valerie lives in a happy bubble because <laughs> the BCLT at a time of an economic downturn has never had so much really? money and never had so many staff members, never had such nice office space. So this is part of your work, you've been getting the funding going? Yeah, we've right? been very, very okay. successful. In the last two years, maybe two and a half years, we've increased our funding by about 35% oh. external funding. Okay. Okay. Pretty so that's a lot of work. Yeah. yeah, but we're doing some pretty great things. I work with amazing staff members who are really, really um, successful at showing the funders why okay. they might want to put a small investment of funds really gets that literature okay. out there. Good. Let's go back. Valerie, what were you doing when you were 22, 23, 24? Ah, uh, well, I was probably was hitchhiking. Three years ago, wasn't it? Uh, yeah, more or less. Yeah. I was probably hitchhiking to Guatemala when I was really? around 22. Um, yeah, I started off hitchhiking from Edmonton to Vancouver and then decided, oh... So that's in Canada. Yeah, right? this is, yes, sorry, this right? is back in Canada. I was oh. actually going, I wanted to go to a concert in Vancouver, so I just hitchhiked out. Oh, you city. got lost in Guatemala. <laughs> <laughs> and then when I got to Vancouver, I thought, you know, this is actually kind of fun. So I thought, oh, go down, just a little south. And Did you hitchhike by yourself? I was actually with uh, the man who became my husband later. Oh, okay. And uh, we got down to Los Angeles, met somebody from Guatemala, thought, oh, keep going. Mm -hmm. Guatemala sounds interesting. Ended up in Guatemala a few months later and um, had a wonderful time. <laughs> so that's not academic life, is it? No, but oh. it was a great preparation, I think, for academic life. I mean, what's my life now? It's 
travel, it's talking to people, it's learning about different cultures, languages. Um, Basic hitchhiking skills. Yeah, yeah more or less. Yeah. Patience. Did you, you went back to academic life after that travel period? Uh, yeah, well my academic life has Probably a lot of people in translation studies come from various sort of odd backgrounds. My first degree was in Latin and um, I was going to be an archaeologist at one point. That was kind of a thing I was doing. And then I did a French master's, a master's degree in French literary translation. Mm -hmm. Then I worked as a technical translator for 10 years okay. and did that for a very in, long time in Canada. in Canada for the Canadian government and various provincial governments. Is that the Japanese coming in there? No, okay. that's all French. All that's right. all yeah, French. Yeah. Um, and then I was interested in women's writing in general, so I started to read Japanese women's writing and mm -hmm. taught myself Japanese for a couple of years and then decided I wanted to go back to academics. So I did a second master's in classical Japanese literature, which led me into a PhD in conflict. Okay. Valerie, where should we be going in translation studies? What kind of research should young people be doing these days? Do you think? Any suggestions? Well, I think we need a lot more work being done on Japan, which is, of yeah. course, what area of my interest. Okay. Translation studies in Japan is really just in its infancy. Mm -hmm. um, they haven't had really translation studies being taught and studied in the universities, but there is so much happening there right now. It's just about to take off, and it's amazing. And I think any anything on sort of the East-West cultural relations, there's a lot of stuff happening in China right now, mm -hmm. obviously. Um, but it seems to me that all the whole Eurocentric model is just so tired and dated, and I yeah. don't, don't see, there's still work to be done there, but there's so much more exciting work to be done outside of that little tiny little geographical area. Good. Valerie, thanks very much. Oh, well, thank you. <laughs>